Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to New Jersey. Today in the barn shop, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about plating. Uh, zinc plating specifically because I got a source of pure zinc from my uh, next barn neighbor who uh, took this off of his boat. There's probably a lot of life left in this anode, but these are sacrificial anodes that keep the parts on the boat from corroding too much. But because they're pure zinc, they're a good source for, um, for plating. And what we're going to plate is these four bolts off of our 1965 Triumph TR6 uh, motorcycle here. And we got the blow up part of it here. These are bolts that hold on the, um, the rear dampers. And we're going to make a zinc acetate solution from stuff you can buy at the grocery store. Um, acetic acid, distilled white vinegar, just regular stuff. Um, Epsom salt, this really only aids in uh, the conduction of electricity, and sugar. Um, that doesn't also doesn't participate in the plating except to disrupt crystal formation. Because zinc wants to form these great big crystals. If you ever see a chain link fence and the, uh, the posts on that, it's got these great big blotchy parts on it. What those are, those are zinc crystals. When they do the process there, it's a uh, hot hot dip galvanizing. Um, you get you get a, initial nucleations of crystals and those just form all the way down the pipe and you get these huge, huge crystals and not really great looking, um, but it's cheap and it's fast. But what we're going to do is not let those big crystals form and have a lot more nucleation sites uh, by breaking those those up with sugar. And what you can get is you can get nice bright finishes like that. Okay, so we'll get started here. Alright, so we're going to make the solution in this ball jar here. And ball, the ball company and the ball aerospace company who makes a lot of satellites um, have put some nice indications on the side of it here. But unfortunately the recipe I'm using uh, seems to think that today should be the 29th day of rainy month rainy month um so unfortunately sometimes you have to deal with french republican units um and uh we have these here so lucky lucky ball foresaw some people using some leftover french silliness so we can just uh work around that all right so it's based around a liter that's a thousand of these things here so, just fill that right up. There we go. Uh, then it wants 100 grams of sugar, and I bought sugar in uh, packet form there. And if we um, look on the box here, the packets are 3.4 grams. And that's um, 15, uh, 34, divide by the, it's that many. It's that, that many sugar packets. So we'll just put these in half and put them in there. You'll probably see this a lot faster than I'm doing it. Okay, so there's that. And... I'm going to go by the very scientific principle that if a hundred grams of sugar made this go up by that much in this line, then the similar amount of Epsom salt will um, will result in the same displacement, even though grams is weight. Uh, but um, yeah, it just doesn't matter all that much. So you need about. Um, What do we think? That much? That much? Yeah, that much. There. Yeah, that much. Um, and then we need the star of the show. We need our zinc to show up. And this just goes kind of there. You can uh, put the lid on here. 
And I'm gonna seal this up for right now, but do not, do not leave this, um, leave this sitting, uh, because what's gonna happen here is that as the acid dissolves the zinc, uh, it's gonna give off hydrogen gas. It's probably already doing it, just not very quickly. And if you have a container of oxygenated air and hydrogen, what you've done is you've made a nice little bomb. So we'll just... And then undo the lid. You can leave it on just so crap doesn't fall on it. But uh, yeah, just make sure that you're you're leaving some some way for the hydrogen to get out. So you're supposed to let this sit for 24 hours, but I don't have time for that. So voila, you're done. So now that we've got our plating solution, we can turn our attention back to what we're plating. Um, these bolts are in an utterly hopeless condition for plating because one rust doesn't conduct, so the zinc would never stick to it. And two, even if you could stick it to it, it would just flake off later. So we'll take these over to the sandblaster and get this rust off of here. And I'd show you that, but I can't see it myself. I just kind of got a sandblast by feel because the light's blown out and I'm too lazy to fix it. So there we go. Uh, we've got these back to white metal here. Um, and these could plate pretty decently and we'll show you what that looks like. But the first thing you want to do is you want to get them clean because no matter how clean you think they are, they're not clean enough. Um, so start with just degreaser sort of thing here. Uh, just a little dippy dabble doer. And tumble it around some. Okay, so that'll probably do to degrease the parts. Um, and you'll want to get all the soap off of it before you put it into the plating solution, obviously. So then, clean off any non-polar stuff, uh, quick squirt with some acetone. I'm going to use uh, nitrile gloves. Not so much because the stuff's nasty, and the stuff's not great for you, don't get me wrong. Uh, and you definitely don't want to drink it, it is poisonous. Uh, but more just to keep the oil from my hands um, from contaminating these. So to plate these, we're just going to do one for right now. What we're going to do is take uh, some titanium wire. You can buy this off Amazon. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive, if you know what I mean. So, uh, this is just 18 gauge, just enough to really conduct it. So, leave yourself enough room. And cuts just with a pair of dikes like that. And just take this and just kind of give it a wrap around. There, like that. And that will hold it in the solution. Just like that. So we'll take you over to the plater and show you how it works. So let me walk you through my plating rig. Uh, what this is, is this is just two by fours with a uh, keyhole saw, saws cut through it. And then that's just kind of cut in half down that hole saw line and put there. Um, that lets me put the copper rails that'll have, that carry the DC voltage wherever I need them to. I want to do something a bit better with the um, solution holding. As you can see, it's very rudimentary here. Um, just a bucket on a milk crate. Um, so what actually provides the power for it is just some pieces that I bought off of Amazon for a very limited amount of money. Uh, it's a 12 volt power supply here that I actually had for something else. Um, and I'm actually going to replace it with a 24 volt because it doesn't really have enough. You'd like some more voltage in some places. Um, and this is a uh, 10 amp buck boost converter. And that just lets me vary the voltage. It came with this tiny little screwdriver operated thing. And then I uh, 
put on this other potentiometer and didn't think about it too much and bought linear pots and that's a mistake. Um, I've also ordered the audio taper pot re uh, replacement for that. And then just an automotive fuse box here, uh, 10 amps. You do need to, you do need to um, protect both the positive and negative rails because the, neither one of them is referenced to ground. Um, so you can have a fault from negative to ground as well as positive to ground. Uh, for that reason, have the same two switches operation here. It'd be better to have a two pole switch, but uh, I couldn't find one at the Home Depot, so this is what we get. So the anode in this arrangement is just this little cut off bit of zinc um, that I've bound up with some titanium wire. And this can just, I'm just going to put this as far down into the solution as I can get it. So the part we're going to completely submerge. Not the greatest, but we'll make it work. All right, so we give it the juice. So if you can see down in there. You can see that there is some bubbles forming on the part, and that's doing as it should right there. So that is zinc actually depositing on our part. So I've just taken this one <clears throat> out of the zinc solution, and it looks pretty dark. It's darker than some other results I've gotten. I've going to add some sugar to it, see if that helps to brighten it up some. But you can see that the surface finish, whatever you put into the tank, is what you're going to get out of it. So if this is rough and has this surface patina from the blaster, well you're going to get that in zinc. This is actually plated in zinc. You, can, you almost can't tell one part from the other. Um, but the good part about this is if, if this is if this is a good enough finish for you this this will have corrosion resistance so if you just want corrosion resistance uh, you can do this so for the other three bolts I'm gonna set one aside just as a before and after the other one I'm gonna use some number two steel wool some double aught scotch bright and the third one I'm going to put in my vibratory bowl tumbler with this plastic pyramid media that supposed to give a very fine surface finish, but I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see how it does. So this is my vibratory tumbler. It's a rather big bowl. I bought it for some bigger parts and then didn't really work out for them. So hopefully nuts and bolts is a better use case. So we'll put this in there and turn it on. So these are the ones with uh, improved surface finish, and they're straight off of the, out of the vat. This one was the tumbled one. Uh, you can see that it's preserving just, yeah, framing. So this one was the tumbled one, and you can see that it's keeping some of that patina to it. Uh, and just that very fine pitting in the surface finish. And this one was hand finished. And you can see that every little speck you leave in your surface finish shows up in the zinc. But where you do have smooth metal, you do have fairly bright zinc on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these all through the tumbler a couple more times and see if I can't put a couple more coats of zinc on it and see where they end up. So I ran these three through the vibratory bowl for, I don't know, however long it took me to go eat dinner. Uh, came back, dipped them in, scotch-brighted them off, rinse-repeat, 
And this is this is where they ended up. And I think this is pretty good. Uh, nice, even white metal finish. Um, probably just not going to get a shiny show chrome finish out of this, no matter what you do. Uh, need a different zinc electrolyte or just a different electrolyte altogether. But this is totally low rent. Uh, you can get everything you need, except for maybe the zinc anode, from a grocery store for under 20 bucks. Um, and you don't need the, the sophisticated rig that I've got. You could whack something together with a car battery and it'll, it'll totally work. Um, so good technique to keep in your back pocket. So that's that. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you learned something and I'll try better next time.